Uh, the, the application that we'd like to feature this afternoon is called Nuzella. Uh, it has been one that's been around for a while, but especially the last couple of years, most of its nice features have gone to the pro paid version. And it, we do have it available for the duration of the school year, the pro version for free, as a lot of other apps are free right now. And we haven't been promoting all of them because we don't want to overwhelm teachers, but we thought there's a few that we would and Newzella is one of them. So take a look at it today. We'll show you what it does and see if you, that would fit for any of the assignments that you're creating for your class. Got anything in chat yet? So, all right, I'm going to share my screen and walk you through this. Uh, Greg, you'll need to enable me to share my screen, please. Greg? You're good now. Sorry. There we go. I got it. So, all right. Is the wrong screen. Sorry, I'm going to get to the right one. I've got too many screens open. It's not it either. All right, one more time. I'll open up this screen right here. Okay, there we go. All right, can you see my screen? I can see you. Okay. Looking good. The screen. So, <laughs> we're gonna go to Newzella, just go to the website right here. And mine's gonna look a little different than yours the first time that you log in, just because I've already created an account. Uh, you're going to see a screen that says, uh, get free access or log in. You already have free access, so don't click the free access button. Go ahead and just log in with your Google account, verify it to your Nebo account, and you'll be able to log in. When you log in, you're going to uh, be able to create your profile. Let me show you what this looks like. So Can I have a quick comment? Yes. They have to log in with Google, correct, to get that yes. free version? Yes. With our Nebo account, oh, right? Yes. There's a button there that'll say, uh, sign up for a free account. Don't sign up for a free account because we already did that as a district. Just go ahead and sign in with Google. Good, thank you. So this is what your profile, when you first sign in, you'll get a, a, a page like this to create your profile and you'll just put what, <clears throat> Uh, these are all of the types of articles that are provided, but I just put general elementary and you can go back and change that um, anytime. The language, uh, whether or not students have access to technology and what reading standards that you want to. Um, you can you get a Common Core or Texas, so I took Common Core. So that closely matches our Utah standards. So I'm going to save that. Um, and this is where you add your classes. So I'm going to go to classes right here. And the thing that I like about Nuzella is that it syncs with your Google Classroom classes. So if you already have a class in Google Classroom, you can sync it right here and you don't have to create a new account, add students in Nuzella, um, and your students don't have to um, sign into Nuzella. You're just going to assign these articles and assignments right from Google Classroom. So the, the way that you add a class is you click on sync now and it will bring up all of your Google Classrooms. You can see that I've already seen this <coughs> class that I created just for this um, demonstration, which is called the Newzella class, but I could create, oh, sorry, my mouse wants to right click when I want it to left click. I can create uh, any number of classes at the same time. I'll select the grade of that class 
and I can even select the subject. Then I'll go sync selected classes and go back to my classes. You can see now I've added that sample class also. So it'll show all of the ones uh, that have been created. I can go in here anytime to edit uh, any of those settings or I could archive the class. So that would be your first step is to create a class before you search for content. Um, so now I'm going to take you, let me just go out here for a minute and take you to this link here, kind of to explain what Nizella is. So we know that you already have access to a lot of online content. Uh, the instructional coaches have made, have put a lot of resources out there. The one difference that Newzella is, is that you can um, assign the same article to your whole class and they can see it at up to five different reading levels. So instead of having a different article or something else to read for each reading level, you can have the same article and students can access it uh, on different levels. So you could have a, an, a, an activity that followed it or a discussion that followed it and all of your whole class would be able to participate it because they had been all been able to access the content. Do you, so, do you change those settings here or do you change them in Google Classroom? That what? Do you change the settings of uh, the readability? In, in here, I'll show, you, I'll show you that when we do. So it's, you created, it's going to um, automatically assign it as the more they do and the more assignments they complete, but they can change it themselves too. So you don't change it in Google Classroom, you'll change it here from Nizella. So these are just a few, uh, there's just a description of what Nizella does. Notice here that it has thousands of real world, real world text. So these are Usually online news articles. Um, they also have a compare and contrast set. Uh, they have primary artifacts in here. You can choose that. Um, you, because we have this pro account, you get your visibility into usage and student performance. It will even tell you how long they spent reading, how long they spent in there. Uh, there's vocabulary work that's included. There's also uh, prompts, writing prompts that you could change, that you can customize yourself. Again, I told you that you can differenti differentiate your instruction, published at five reading levels, and they add two new texts every day. So it's something that's going to have really relevant articles in it. And you can search by topic, but you can also explore content by uh, your standard. So if you're working on a particular ELA standard, you can search by that standard. So little introduction right there go back to this site here so first thing i did was go to my settings set up my classes now i'm just going to go and search so there's a lot of different ways you can search by topics up here i'm in the top but i'm just going to go to the general search option and i could search by a specific topic but i could also open up the search bar and get a more advanced, well, I just clicked in here I didn't write, and I can have more advanced filters. So I just clicked on what do you teach instead of putting, so articles are single articles, text sets are a set of articles on one topic, or you could search by standards. And uh, these activities would be aligned to these standards. So I picked that I was in a fifth grade class. That's why it's showing me standards from third grade to sixth grade. But again, if I wanted different, I would just change uh, my profile for that class. I'm just going to search from articles right here. So notice I can uh, search from different collections that are already here. So maybe I wanted something that was for a social studies class. And maybe this would be suggested for upper, lower elementary school. Um, here's my text level. So it, it's going to be on five different levels, but if you choose one, you'll know that at least that level will be in it. So since I have I've set this up as a fifth grade class, it is at least going to have that in the middle or somewhere in those levels that are available. I, and then there's more filters over here. Uh, 
I, it looks like, do I, and a lot of over here on the right, do I, what kind of format do I want it as an essay, a primary source, a reference source? This will tell me, do I want one that has power words, which are the vocabulary words added with it? So it has built in textual help with those words, plus it has a little activity. And do I want to have a prompt that goes with it? So I've got all those set and apply those. And then this is what I've come up with in my search. These are the articles. So you can tell what these little icons are down here. This means it's social studies. This means it's got the power word activity. This means it's a, it has an ELA um, standard connected to it. So you can tell really quick what the filter has brought up for you. So um, let me just find one here. I mean, you can go and there's, there's thousands of articles, but um, let's talk about this one, Want a Revolution, It's Easy, Go Vote. So I'm going to open that and take a look at it. Here's where the activities are. You can read it so you can see here where, where it's from. It's, this is an article from the Chicago Tribune. Here's the text level. Um, it'll give you the word count. This was just published in the end of February. So it's about uh, taking the census, I think. Here, so you can see where the power words are. Go through here if there's a, I go explore power word and it gives me a, uh, it tells me what that word is, and I can also hear it pronounced. Indicate. To indicate something means to show it exists or is true. So I can also give instructions. You'll see when you go in to actually do it that students can go in and they can annotate. There's little annotation tools. So you can give them an article and have them go in and in one color, you know, identify all the proper nouns or whatever or certain main ideas. So I can print it out, um, I can share it, but I'm also, before I do that, I'm gonna look here and I am going to look at the activities. So here's the Power, power Word Act, whoops. You can see what's here, there's a little quiz, one out of 10, um, a qu what they get. So if they are, they can, this is already set up, so it's a little vocabulary quiz that they can take after they read. Here's the writing prompt that goes with it. And you can edit this and make your own. So you don't have to do uh, the prompt that's there. You could go in and create your own prompt. And then there's a quiz. It's a comprehension quiz. And I think that is not editable. Just the prompt is editable. So that's already created for you. I could change this. This is um, where it's presented as at the 800 level. I could also have it presented at a lower Lexile level if I wanted to. And then students can increase it or decrease it on their own. And at, as the students um, read more articles and complete more comprehension quizzes, it will automatically assign them the level, kind of levels they're reading, but they have to use it a little bit. So then when I go to assign it, I'm going to go uh, create, I can add it to an existing assignment or I can create an assignment. And I will select the class. I'm going to assign it. These are the classes that I synced with my Google Classroom. So I'm gonna, I can even adjust the level again. And then I will just click assign. So here's the part you need to remember after you've assigned it. it. This exists in Newzella right now. So like if your students just liked it to Newzella, they could take it. But I haven't shared it with Google Classroom yet. I shared it to my Newzella class that was synced to my Google Classroom class, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go in here and click the share button and share it with Classroom now. And it will let me choose the classroom. That I want to share it with. So it exists in two places. There's, and I may want to name one Newzella, you know, I don't know, maybe one and Newzella two, but just so you keep track, it's one is your Google Classroom class and one is the Newzella class. So I'm going to create an assignment. 
and I forget, oh, this was on the census or whatever. And I, then I could give my own instructions here, read the article. Uh, complete the writing prompt and the vocabulary power words quiz and comprehensive check. Sorry, I can't type. Comprehension check. So you could give them any instructions there. Give this the points in here, however you want to do that. Set the due date, just like you would any other of your assignments. And this will take them directly when they go in, it would take them directly to that, to the Newzella assignment. Now, if you have them do the writing prompt in Newzella, you'd have to go to Newzella to look at it, if that makes sense. If I wanted them to do the, the same writing prompt, but do it within Google Classroom instead, then I might, um, No, it's not letting me add another. Let me just assign this. Yeah, Pam, the reason it's not letting you is because you're creating that from the Newzella into Google Classroom, not straight from Google Classroom. That's why right. I, I was just going to go back into Classroom and see if I could add any, but it's not going to let me do that. So anyway, that's basically where it is. You can see if I went in as a student, I might have added myself to this class. Let me see. Did, did one of your coaches that added the class, do you want to go in and show, share your screen and show what it would look like from a student perspective? Sure, I can do that. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. So let's go into... Not so I did give them, uh, I gave the coaches the code to join that Newzella class. I created that new class, but the, you wouldn't have to. You could just do it into your existing class. I didn't have to create a new class. This was just for the purposes of this uh, demonstration. I forgot to, and I could go back in and there's the census. That's the one that I just did. I could have given it a topic, but I didn't. The assignment. So I could have say they they do have that add or create option up in the top. So click that, Greg. You could have given them an assignment to create a new Google Doc and to um, you know respond to the writing prompt there if you wanted to have that right within Google Classroom. But um, go ahead and and click on the assignment, the Newzella assignment, and you can see that he he'll sign in with Google. So you might have to make a little screencast for your students the first time that you do this or talk them through. I don't know if you ever hit a sign, actually. Oh, okay. Well, I can... But it's there, so it should be. That's weird. Can you click on one of the other ones that I yeah, I'll go to? Yeah, I'll go to one of the other ones. I tried and I don't know if it's because we have teacher accounts that it's not letting us in as a student. I'm not quite uh, sure. Okay. Well, I might, mm, I'll go in as a, um, a student on a student account. I got my student account. I think I added myself as a student. Let me go in here really quick. Okay, I'll stop and you can share again. This won't be the same one, but okay. Okay, I went in as a student. I added myself as a student uh, with our student trainer account. And when I went in, I was able to view the one that I just put on. But I can't really share this screen. Maybe I can, see if it'll let me share the screen, even though that's not the... There it is. Okay, awesome. Can you see this screen? Yes. 
So you can see here I'm in as a student. Oh. So here is, I'll go back here. I went into the Nuzella class. Here's the one I just created under classwork. I go here. It didn't have to verify my account because I only had one account as a student. So it took me into Nuzella, to Nuzella. I could open it right here. So here's the reading. I could, I could view the assignment right here. Here's my activities over here to the right to complete. I can, the student up in the right hand corner can change the reading level if it's too easy or too hard. It will automatically assign them to one. I don't know what this view assignment. Now, do you assign the, can you assign different uh, activities or does it always assign the same activities? Um, you would assign, it assigns the same activity, but it, the activity also would be on the reading level. So when you change that reading level, it would change the activity, it would change the comprehension questions, and it would also change the activity. Does that okay. make sense? But is it, but can you pick and choose which activities to do, or are they always going to have a writing and a vocabulary? You can and... pick. You can pick. Okay. You can choose to include them or not. That's up to you. When I go here, it opens up. Now I'm in Nuzella, so it takes your students into Nuzella directly from Google Classroom. I never went to Nuzella. But it will show me my other Nuzella assignments here that were created. There's another one I created this morning. I open it up. Here's the article. Again, I can change the reading level. We haven't had this long enough, but what I think what would happen is the more the student, the more articles they do and they choose the reading level, then it would automatically assign that to them. But these power words would change. Let's look and see. So here's the max reading level. Let's look at what the power words are here. Um, we have which word goes with effective. It's a self-correcting. Um, and let's go in, if I went to the lowest reading level, you can see the word change. I'm doing quickly or steady. So that's kind of cool, even though it's the same article. Like this article, does it give you the words? This has 364 words. If I went up here to the max, the same topic has uh, 380, has some harder words in it. Does that make sense? Are there any questions? We don't have anything on the chat. Is it something that you think you might use? I would just try it one time, try it out. I think what it does that we don't have, like I told you is the, even though you already have a lot of leveled reading material for your students. This gives your students the same material, but on different levels. So that's kind of, and to have this comprehension of vocabulary quizzes already worked in. So browse through, see if students can also go in. Like if I went in here, did I stop sharing my screen already? Let me, I, okay, am I sharing my screen? I'm not. Okay, let me share this. No, screen. not yet. Uh, what does that look like? Okay. Once I'm in as a student, I can also go in here. You're, and I you're still not sharing your screen. If you're meaning to, you're not sharing it. Oh, I need to click the share. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. So I'm in as a student right now. So I can also go in and I could browse any of these articles. So you can even have your students go in and look for any of these articles if they wanted to, you know, look at search, do some research so they could use it as a reference or a research tool also. So they, they, they also have access to the full library. I think as I'm going in here. Click enter. 
And it also creates a word wall, a progress of how they're doing. There's a binder for the teacher. There's also a binder for each student. And it has all of their work that's in there. The teacher binder has all of the teacher work. Oh, oh I'm in their way in the wrong account here. Anyway, I'll stop sharing my screen. Okay, Ramon said he might try it at some point. Oh, the background. <laughs> Just go down at the bottom of your screen where it says stop video. And there's a little upward pointing carrot. If you click on that, you have an option to choose virtual background. And you can, uh, they have some there to choose from or you can upload your own image. Notice that you have, you can't be on a Chromebook to do that, sorry. It has to be a desktop, laptop, something different. I will put the toilet paper one back on just for Ramon. Oh, there we go. <laughs> just wanted y'all to be jealous. You're in heaven. I'm in, I'm in TP heaven, yeah. So, any other questions on that? If you do give it a try, please let us know how it works for your class. Like I said, well, it has, we'll have limited access to this in the fall, but it might be a good opportunity to try out this pro access for the rest of the school year. All right. All right, to total side note, but going along with that video uh, or the, the picture of the background, you can also upload a video. So you can have a video playing in the background. I saw a teacher uh, pretending they were skiing as they were going. It's pretty cool. So total side note. Side, I'm sorry. Really cool. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ramon, Liz, Tim. Have a good day.